Glad to go through and have him on. He's a, a great friend of mine that I've met through the streaming journey. And I know he doesn't stream too much, but he's really big in the whole paranormal side. So, paranormal mafia, guys. No, wait, I love you air guitars, because I can't really play the guitar. Well, I'm practicing, though. I got one over there in the corner. Let's go. Got All right, got you with the Mad Libs. I got you with the Mad Libs. All right, the man, the myth, the legend. Let's go through and bring on Paranormal Mafia. Grab the smoke. Hey, what's up, brother? I just got recently done playing um uh atomic heart so like yeah that that was a good game so what are you what are your thoughts on the game i've heard a lot of uh mixed reviews that it's a beautiful game people would highly recommend it but they don't like the fact that it's in russia and with all the stuff going on i don't want to get like too political but i mean there's some stuff right. going through and talking about that what are your thoughts on the game um just like hogwarts legacy i think uh, taking away out of the politicalness of both of those games. Both games are amazing. Um, graphics, design, music, both games are great. Because um, let's be honest, both are very controversial at this time, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And uh, I enjoyed it. Um, if it's if it if you like a game that has difficulty, but not too much difficulty, even on an easy setting. It, it's a very enjoyable game. It's it's challenging because there's puzzles, and I I, I didn't think anything. The only thing I thought, uh, complaint wise, is that there was just too many bosses in between uh, little blank spots, like mm -hmm. just when you're playing the story. But other than that. The design of it is beautiful, amazing game, uh, controls are great, I would love to see, like, I, I'm not even gonna front, I would love to see on that world, it, like, a battle royale game, like, a it, it definitely, it, it definitely can be opened up for a battle royale from what I've seen, uh, it, I've, I haven't played the game, I've seen the game, I've seen a lot of other streamers go through and play it, it, it looks like a very, very beautiful game, uh, a mix of, Let's let's say uh, Fallout, and there's another game that it it, it, it blends really well with. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people have been talking really good uh, good about it. And you think that can compete with Hogwarts Legacy for Game of the Year? I do, actually, I do. Um, give it a minute, give it a little bit longer. Uh, people need to really look past the fact that it's set in a. a alternate reality dystopian Russia uh. Uh, because th there, there is a factor with that it's, it's actually uh, apparently from what I understood is it's a Hungarian uh, developer team so for them to make it is a little like political in a way but we're not going to get into that um but yeah, it's. It, I think it's a very enjoyable game. I think it is just like, in a way, I think right now, currently with 2023, I think the two games right now that are definitely at each other's throats for Game of the Year are Hogwarts Legacy and Atomic Heart, without a shadow of a doubt. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm very excited, and I'll say there's going to be one that can compete with this, and unfortunately, it is only linked to nintendo so some would say some some feel like to for the game of the year it needs to be a, a, across every single platform but i am very excited for tears of the kingdom Zelda. i i don't disagree with you on that one that's for sure that one I, when that comes out i plan on buying it so i actually have a free preload or uh <laughs> i can't even think uh i already have it pre-bought <laughs> Yeah, yeah, whatever. Oh, nice. Yeah, pre bought. Pre, I, I bought it. You, you pre ordered it. Pre ordered it. Thank nice. you. I, yeah, yeah, sorry. Dad brain pre ordered it. I pre ordered it on Amazon. 
Yeah, dad brain right, going through. You get the excuse. You get the Thank excuse. You. <laughs> Thank you for the hydrate. Yeah, so that's the thing, guys. We do a lot of fails on here, and we just keep learning about fails and just keep failing on failing because that's what we do. It's a fun time for everybody to go through and, and listen to. All right, so uh, what got you interested into being a content creator? Um, Being a content creator in general, like... I wanted to get I, I, I love having the ability to play games and to be able to share my experiences with my new experiences. I, I, I made the I made the really bad mistake of not streaming Atomic Heart because I got so like once I started it, I couldn't stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Nobody got to experience like my first playthrough of that game, but I am working on a playthrough of a game called Amori right now. What game and, was it? Uh, and um, I, I I'm really enjoying that. I've only played like the first hour of the game. Apparently, there's 20 hours, so there's going to be like 20 parts on my YouTube channel of me playing Amori. <laughs> okay. But um, so, is it the same name? For your YouTube channel? Yeah, Paranormal Mafia all all around uh, Twitch. Uh, YouTube and Twitter. Same thing. Okay, got you, got you. So yeah, we'll definitely go through and get that sent out to everybody. Uh, same name, guys. If you want to go through and check them out on YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Twitch, all, all the above. Same name right there in the picture. So, uh, okay, so you, you're going through and playing a few games, and I mean, obviously, that, that's 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 the reason why we we do be in, we are aspired to be a content creator. Uh, we want to go through and you know, share our journey of certain games, our experiences with other people. Yeah, and and so that's why we we go through and do this because I mean it's something we enjoy, and yeah, we we go through and enjoy it. Um, exactly, and I think other people watching us play new games that you know with new experiences. I think it it does bring a sense of relief to some people. I, I think that um, you know, in, in this day and age, kicking back and watching your favorite streamer is pretty relaxing. I mean, I, I knew when I was growing up, you know, the beginning stages of of YouTube was really there. So I got to see PewDiePie and Markiplier in their very beginning stages. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in a way, I guess you could say that they were influences of how, like, I want to do my streaming and, and how I want to do my content and stuff at some point when I, when I can. Um, but yeah, like, I definitely think that they had an influence in a way, but like, I, I, I love the ability to share what i'm feeling and what i'm going through at that moment so like let's say you're playing outlast like we all know outlast mm -hmm. we all know yeah that game that outlast. game is crazy that game is crazy <laughs> yeah. and you know if i if i would have thought to become a content creator at the time when i first played outlast i think people would have been laughing at me nonstop because I actually straight up threw my controller at my wall and like made a hole in the wall. It was pretty funny. Oh damn! Oh damn! You don't have any pictures. No proof. No, I don't. No I picture. Don't no, pictures, no picture. No proof. But no. no uh, so there's a quick question for you over here. Uh, if you could change something you didn't do at the start of content create your content creator career, but you should have done, what would it be? So, so we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Actually, that, that's that's later in, in. So we'll get to that. So keep that in mind. Uh, some All some right. experiences that you wish you would go through and talk to yourself in uh, past or whatever. So uh, you kind of nipped in the bud uh, on some games that you went through. You've you've have gone through and played. Now, what is the, the, the main genre of games that you go through and play? I really enjoy any game that has a good story-driven uh, plot with it. I Don't get me wrong, I enjoy multiplayer games, but I heavily enjoy a good story. 
Mm. Um, so anything like horror, action, a- anything with a good story, a- anything mm. that anybody is going to tell me that is absolutely phenomenal story-wise, just like Outlast and Atomic Heart and Fallout. I mean, I'm a huge Fallout fan, and I just enjoy... I mean, even Call of Duty. Some some of the story modes for Call of Duty have been absolutely fantastic. Modern Warfare 2, the, the, the first one, the main one. You know, that ending, that ending. If you haven't played... The first Modern Warfare 2, and you know that, and you don't know that ending. Well, sorry to spoil it to, for you, but like, the death of Ghost was really like one of those things that blew my mind. Definitely yeah. didn't see it coming. So, yes, so that, that's a great thing about uh, all these story based games. Uh, and especially when they go through and they grab your attention like i would say one of my favorite story based games i don't really do campaigns when it comes to multiplayer games uh, people go through and shun me because i've never beat a, a call of duty uh, campaign never inspired to go through and do it I, I always go through and just play the games for multiplayer to play with friends and stuff like that however i did play titanfall 2 and that storyline is one of the best down sounds like sounds like one of the best for me so uh, out of all of those story-based games, Call of Duty, and which one would be your favorite? Well, that's a hard one because a lot. There's been a few that have impacted me, like made me think and stuff like that. But I really think that if if there was a game that really stood out that made not just an impact, but like that i just enjoyed all around i i'd have to say outlast outlast is a good one now oof man go ahead go ahead i'd have to say outlast just because the fact that it's it's you go into that game with the thought process of you're just there investigating and it literally turn the game turns on you so quick. It's like, oh wait, what? <laughs> you 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 back up and you're like, what just happened? And yeah. then the amount of twists and turns with the game, how how absolutely lore driven the game is, and how deep the lore goes. I, I love games like that. And how many times have you played out last? too many to count too many to count uh okay and so still, and i still found new stuff like i still found new pieces of lore somehow that i missed usually it, it ends up being like that you know you find things that you haven't seen and especially the more times you go through and play you look for certain certain things and for, for me i barely play a game like once I, I beat it i rarely go back uh unless i really like the game you go through and do something like that. So I one I would really go back to playing again would be the Evil Within one and two. I really love that series. And I have not played any Resident Evil. I however I know what? the the makers, the makers of Resident Evil made that. And I really, 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 really did enjoy the storyline base behind that. Uh now I know it was choppy with some some of the stuff, but I from what I've seen. From what I've seen, hey, don't at me, don't at me. From what I've seen, oh no, I'm gonna at you later. I'm gonna at you later. From what yeah. I've seen, you know, you need to play Resident Evil now. Now you, now, now I demand it. But I'm gonna t- tell you, just avoid Resident Evil Six. I, I Six so is- yeah, up and down from it. But from what I've seen, I've, I've I've watched some gameplay. I've watched some gameplay, but the Evil Within Two, Evil Within One, I feel is a much better game. I, I just feel like it's a much better game. I, I, I enjoy it. Unfortunately, I wish they had a third one come out. Uh, I, I really love the story and the premise behind all of it. I think, I I think with the evil within, pretty much in my mind, ties actually with um, Outlast, with how much lore there is and how like impactful it was. That that game was just twist and turn and this and that, and it's like whoa. Yeah, that's a, that's a good thing about a lot of the, a lot of the games though. So uh, I did play Outlast. I couldn't finish it. The game was too freaky for me. I did play Outlast too. Uh, 
didn't finish that one either. Like I have a habit of starting games and not finishing them. So that's like one of my goals I have to go through and do. But it, it, yeah, so with that being said, what is your favorite game of all time? Would it be Outlast? No. My favorite game of all time, and I know that some people are going to criticize me a little bit for it, but I grew up in the Nintendo 64 era. You should know where I'm going with this. Okay, let's see. N64 game, you want to take a guess? There's a lot of them, but uh, I would say either GoldenEye, Mario Kart, Donkey Kong 64, or Ocarina of Time. Ocarina of Time, all the way. I mean, that's that's my dude. That's, that's, that's mine. That's, the that's mine. That... Ocarina of Time. I grew up in the 64 area as well. That's, that's mine. the one that, like, defined how I viewed video games and, like, put this huge interest in video games and that's where it started was ocarina of time how complex that story was but yet how easy if you just sit down and just play that game you could easily beat that in like two three days oh yeah no it's it's a great game i think it definitely no 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 it's on nintendo 64 uh i think it really changed the dynamic of how uh graphics went for nintendo uh-huh. I know Mario Mario 64 changed it, but Ocarina of Time came out first, and I really I really did enjoy the what it what it brought. Now I know Mario 64 was a game changer, but any so that's the thing. Like any Zelda game, you look at this. Any Zelda game that drops, Nintendo is developing a new console, so they know what sells. Like Mario, obviously they have like four or five different Marios in between every single console they have. But they have one Zelda, maybe two Zeldas, like one big Zelda. So uh, they're talking about making a new Switch come out when Tears of the Kingdom come out, comes out. But a lot of people are, are pushing for the OLED Switch. Oh, NES times? Yeah. yeah. You don't even know what an N64 is, Legend? What? Oh, my what? goodness. So Ocarina of Time is really a, a good one, a really good one to, to go with. Where, where's the audio clip from Game of Thrones where you're just hearing shame, shame? <laughs> I know, yeah, shame, shame. And this is not ZDP approved on that. But uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, so somebody, I, well, Legends, shame, shame. Uh, Legends asked, what is, the, what is the, how'd you come up with your name? What is the meaning? What it, what is, what inspires you to come up with the name for you have well interesting thought there interesting question there because um so i'm i'm heavily into the paranormal i've been a paranormal investigator for just about 12 years now and i also am into true crime extremely as a matter of fact i plan on opening my own true crime and oddities museum at some point uh but we'll get to that later um but yeah that's literally the simplicity of my name is because i'm interested in the paranormal and i'm interested in true crime i combined the two got paranormal mafia and it just it just slammed man i honestly when i first popped in your stream and i saw the name i was very intrigued with what how it was together but i really felt like you were like some kind of gangster or like had a like a squad that is like the Ghostbusters, but you guys are in like mafia suits and going around shooting up ghosts with, with Tommy guns and stuff like that. I had a feeling it was something like that. Just, but uh, I wish. I wish. So so that, so ta- that, that sounds a lot a lot more uh, fun than than uh, than what the actual answer is. <laughs> so, so tell us some. Of, I, I would like to know some investigations that you've uh, encountered. You said you've been on true crime. Uh, to true crime you've you've done your, your paranormal activity invest or a paranormal investigator uh for 12 years so what are what are some places you've been to tell us some stories um i've been to probably a few dozen places but uh i've been to the old south pittsburgh hospital in tennessee i've Wait, been which to one which one in tennessee Wait, the, the old south pittsburgh hospital in tennessee 
and I've been to the old Donna Anna County Jail and Courthouse down in Las Cruces, New Mexico. I've been to several jails in Florida, uh, several jails and courthouses, actually, in Florida. I have even investigated the legendary St. James Hotel in Cimarron, New Mexico, and that one, that was really interesting. There's videos Have you, have you been to Alcatraz? Getting into Alcatraz is just as hard as trying to investigate the White House. I would imagine. I would imagine. So, okay, so Legends would like to know, what is the most scariest thing you've encountered? The most scariest thing I've encountered isn't really... What wasn't really visual, it was more auditory. Um, I was walking down, and this was at the old South Pittsburgh Hospital. So I was walking towards the ER room, and it was just me and one other investigator. And me and her were walking towards the ER room because we were going to do a EVP session. And an EVP session stands for uh, electro uh, electromagnetic voice phenomena, uh, where you can hear voices in the white noise and, and the static and stuff. Um, but w as we were walking, we had heard footsteps behind us. Now, we turned, looked, thinking that somebody else was like walking up on us or w another investigator was walking up on us and there was nobody behind us. We were just like, whatever. So we just continue walking. We're probably approximately... 200 feet away from the ER room at this point. We're just getting closer and closer. And uh, we hear pitter-patter again of feet. And not really thinking much of it because it is an old building. It, there was some strange building noises, you know. Th then the pitter-patter for like a third time started, but it didn't stop. And it rushed in between us. We felt a breeze of air, and we heard squeaky gurney wheels. Sure, that wasn't uh, a, a gas bubble coming out from no, being scared. That was not a that no, that was not a gas bubble. That's funny. <laughs> that was not a gas bubble. No, but that that was probably one of the most terrifying experiences. That I was like, oh, there really is a paranormal like thing going on. Hmm. So, oh, so two things with that. Would that be the most haunted site you've been to since it was the, well, I mean, claimed to be the most haunted site since you had the experience you did have in? No. Okay. So what, no. what would be the, what would be the most uh, haunted area you've encountered? The St. James Hotel in Cimarron, New Mexico. Okay. By okay. far. Okay. Okay. The uh, experiences that happen there, there's some experiences that due to uh privacy reasons um yeah there there's there's a sto there's a particular story let's just say that a partial possession had happened they yeah it was not a very fun ride that second night of investigating we investigated three nights there and uh the second night was when everything went very sideways had to deal with a partial possession got things thrown at one of the investigators got things thrown somebody was scratched nothing that i experienced even though i was asking very nicely and politely hey can you guys throw something or scratch me or or partially possess me or something hello why why, why don't i get attention everybody else around me was he's into that kinky stuff weird. guys he's in that kinky stuff uh but no, that's that's crazy. That's crazy to go through and and witness and be part of something like that. You know, personally, uh, it's 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 one of those things. And I don't mean to like knock on, but it it's hard for me to go through and, and believe this aspect uh, with that. Now, I do watch Zach Baggins. I do watch that because my wife she's really into all of that. And obviously, there are unexplained things, you know, with, with, around us and and also. To hear your story and to to you know have know that you've witnessed some things, it, it's very intriguing. 
on top of that and and so uh yeah yeah it's it's just it's crazy it's crazy to uh to hear these things and and i hear it all the time for uh, from other people and it just i it i don't know how they go through and explain it it's one of those things that, that cannot be explained i guess uh, no that's that's the thing that can't be explained that's why you know mo most of us are still considered pseudoscience like it, it really is a pseudoscience we don't have an explanation for it we don't really fully understand it and the paranormal also includes cryptids and ufos and me living in new mexico let me tell you ufos are a pretty prominent reporting thing mm -hmm. here like mm -hmm. people see them a lot mm -hmm. Particularly in the Southwest, it just seems like they love the Southwest. I don't know if it's just how beautiful it is here in the Southwest. It's beautiful out or, that way. It's beautiful out that way. I've, I've know, been out there. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. know if they're just sightseeing or what, but the Southwest seems to have a very hotbed of, of paranormal activity in general when it comes to cryptids, UFOs, and ghosts all, all around. And it's just a really... It, there's things that I've seen that I can't i, I can't sure come up with i For sure. can't i can't explain what i experienced in old south pittsburgh i can't experience the chaos that happened at st james hotel i can't explain the fact that i did see a weird flying object that like an orb wasn't, yeah but it was like it was a it well it wasn't really an orb it was more cylindrical in the sky mm. but there was even then it was like i didn't know what i was seeing and my and none of my cameras could pick it up good enough where um where you could get like a good image of it hmm. so I, I i really i really feel like to go back on your point with aliens and uh paranormal activity with it being deserted i would i personally would think that would be an interest point for aliens for one there's not much landform and they can go through and do whatever they need to and do whatever they want. But, but, uh, I feel, you know, anything with, with paranormal activity can happen anywhere. You know, you have, uh, what's this place in Gary, Indiana, one of the most scariest locations out there. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, it, there's, it, there's, there's a lot. And I do think that after the amount of years that I've been doing this, the research, the, the, and just interviewing different people and talking to different people about things. I do think without a shadow of a doubt that there are events and creatures that we do encounter on a daily that where our brain just can't process because we don't understand what is actually going on. Are these interdimensional beings? Are these, are, uh, is, is, is the, the, the apparent connection between when we die and when we encounter spirits is that somehow connected do we go to another dimension you know like everybody wants to know these answers and that's what the paranormal really all is is we're mm. just trying to figure this out we're just trying yeah. to figure out what's really going on because certain angles like let, let, let's let's go back about what almost 100 years to World War II Germany for a minute. Mm. I'm not going to use the word. You know the word I'm talking about. Yeah. But yeah. the Germans were very, very interested in the occult. Why is that? Nobody really knows because it's been lost to time or they burned the documents. Yeah. But there's enough proof and enough scientists have given proof that they were doing experimentations with the occult they were they even built a thing called the, the german bell and this bell has never been seen before there's a picture of it and, and multiple depictions of it through soldiers and other officers but they don't really know what happened to that thing and Theories have consisted of, oh, it was a time travel machine all the way to it was a captured UFO. Mm -hmm. But nobody's been able to give an answer. I don't know why the Germans were so intrigued with the occult. 
And I think that they knew more than what we know now about the paranormal and what we are dealing with on that angle. Um, I know for a fact that there was a story where they did take a U-boat out to the Bermuda Triangle. There, there was a story that had apparently leaked a long time ago where they had t- taken – where the big man in charge ordered a group of people to uh, investigate the Bermuda Triangle because mm. he had discovered that that was an apparently a thing. Now, the other fact too that – when it comes down to them being so obsessed with the occult is why were they after all these ancient artifacts, paintings, stuff like that? I get maybe the value. I get that logic, but why were they in Egypt actively looking for ancient relics of Christianity? You know, that, that's, point. that's a question that I've always wondered. And good point. doing deep, huh? That's a good point. Yeah. Doing deep dives on that is like, is, is, you know, why were they so obsessed with that? They had to have known something that we don't know now. They had to have burned those documents, the stories. I don't know what they did, but we don't know what, what they knew now. now. And, the only thing from the Germans that we did learn is a lot of medical advances. Yeah, but I believe um, that if they didn't destroy those documents about the the occult, we might know a lot more than what we do, and we might not all look stupid. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Well, I mean, I'm sure they found some things that human eyes weren't meant to see. You know. Mm-hmm. So uh, it could be that. I mean, we also know they, that there were rumors that they had a lot of scientists that were working on zombies and all the other beliefs and just a lot of different crazy stuff you know super soldiers Uh, super soldiers yeah all that all that stuff so i don't know if that has any ties with all of this but there's a lot of different thoughts out there a lot of different conspiracy theories out there that i mean we don't we don't know we don't know but it definitely is very interesting to go through and wrap your head around and just go down and you know kind of look into that because like you said there is there isn't any evidence that they had but maybe it was because of the fact that you know it was lost because we or, were not able to or we're not supposed to go through and see these things we're as humans we're only supposed to go through and see what we were meant to see and we're not going to know every answer but it's good to go through and have this whole, you know, science, religion, you know, paranormal activity, all that to go through and help go through and explain our existence, to go through and help us find a meeting and all that. So very, very interesting uh, thought process on that. Yeah, it, it's, it's, and who knows, maybe they tapped into something that they're like, oh, shit, uh, we don't think the rest of the world needs to know this. M- maybe something scared them so bad where they literally destroyed all the documentation about that. And it, they didn't want to return to that. And that could be a possibility. Mm. We just don't know. And I don't think we're ever going to know unless... I mean, the interesting thing is is that... They're still finding... Um, unknown and mysterious and unmarked bunkers throughout like Germany and Poland and and still finding and by the way they're still trying to find the mysterious lost train uh, that was filled with trillions of dollars of gold and paintings and like all kinds of stuff they, they don't know everything that was on that train mm. it was probably all a lot of unmarked up and disappear yeah it's probably that a lot of just doesn't go up and di- up, up up and disappear right no. phoenix like it's got to be somewhere they had to have buried it they had to have like known where it was going to be they had to have buried it and like there's got to be something somewhere so i think that if there's going to be anything on the occult left 
it could be on that train. It really could. Got you, got you. So Twisted was asking, have you been to the Warren's house? No. Or have you been I to have Warren's not. house? Yeah. I have not, unfortunately. Are there any locations? But I have been to Zach Bagan's haunted museum. So what are your thoughts on that? Worth it. Worth it. Okay. Okay. You'll, so you'll, no. you'll go there. You'll go there. And if you have any doubts whatsoever of the paranormal, there are artifacts in there that are indefinitely have energies i don't know if i could say entities or i i, demons, I get you on the energy definitely... aspect i get you on the energy aspect I, I i i do i do feel the presence of of some kind of you know energy when it comes comes to that and so i i can kind of you know i can relate to that aspect uh where you you feel overwhelmed you feel presence you feel something that is just you know over your shoulders and, and it's just like it's it's just it's one of those crazy feelings one of those crazy feelings the, the uh it, the one object that was in there that really like drew me in was the dimmick box the the famous dimmick box and that that was like apparently i had zoned out and was walking around in circles around it mm -hmm. um i don't really remember much after i had walked in i just know that i guess i was left alone mm. and one of, and the tour guide had to come in and get me um but i was yeah, very say... fascinated and very drew in like there, there was an energy that drew me in and i like i really wanted to touch the box Wait, which box was it for uh it was the dybbuk box okay yeah there's a dybbuk box there's also I believe a certain doll in there that that does the same exact thing you can't oh, be left alone you can be yeah, left alone that by yourself too. that that doll that doll straight up he, he has a uh he has a um a machine that goes where it's just consistent static noise and i said hello to that doll and very faintly i heard my name and even my grandmother who was with me and heard it i'm like you know I, I don't like that. I don't uh, like that. No, stay. No, I'm good. Don't call my name when I say hi. Please. It's not my name. Hey, it's not my name. <laughs> exactly. It's like, it's not my name. I promise. <laughs> so that's, 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 yeah, crazy. I, I do want to go through and I know the wife wants to go through and see that. Uh, I've seen a lot of people in a lot of situations where people pass out, faint, and all that. And then, so it, it would be an experience to go through and definitely uh, deal with. It. And so definitely, definitely highly suggest because away from Zach Baggins, because I know Zach Baggins himself is controversial. People need to go into that place, uh, especially if they think he's controversial uh, with an open mind um, and realize that you are around actual cursed objects. Mm. and people need to understand and this is why i think some people faint i'm not accusing everybody that faints or has an issue at the museum i think that they do show some disrespect towards certain objects mm -hmm. uh, because of what they are like for example i know for a fact that ed gein's cauldron is in there and um i think the energies around that make you want to hate and make you want to be disrespectful but you have to be respectful no matter what the object is mm -hmm. even if it's just another human skull you, you just have to show some decency of respect uh, so with with that being said I, I don't mean to cut you off now i know we were talking and you said you got another human skull how many do you have i have two human skulls currently so tell us about why why uh, do you collect them and, and whose skulls are they uh i don't know whose skulls they are but i do know that one is a 300 year old human skull it's a partial skull it's not complete but the other one i am i know a little bit more information on it is a much more complete skull and it is an 80 year old man and uh I actually collect them as a part of my museum and as a part of what I plan to do. 
So what are, what, are, what are some goals that you have with this, uh, the museum? You're talking about a museum. I, this is the first time I ever heard about this. What are, what are some goals you have with that? Uh, goal, some of the goals that I want to be able to do is uh, showcase uh, true crime artifacts along with oddities. Uh, particularly with the true crime artifacts, I want to do uh, tribute to each... Um, each true crime artifact, I want to do tributes to the victims rather than just be like, oh, yeah, this is what this killer is. This is his piece of artwork or this is his hair or this is that. And not really give any nuance or notice to the victims. I want to be able to give the victims what they deserve, which is recognition sure. Sure. Um, sure. But I also I want to make sure when people walk out of my museum that they realize that hey these these this true crime shit this is human these are human people these aren't demons these aren't monsters these are humans that are that are committing these atrocities yes it's sad but why are they doing it I want people to walk out of my museum and start questioning human behavior rather than just walk out and be like oh that was a cool museum you know so i have some plans and stuff that i won't divulge into because i don't want to give anybody ideas or ruin that but i do have a lot of cool ideas along that line oddities wise like like i said i have two human skulls i have a two-headed snake um i have multiple post-mortem photos i have some world war ii german memorabilia um i have a blood painting i i mean i've got all kinds of stuff that's just it just continues to pile i have over 350 artifacts currently so so have any of them been uh certified uh, uh, looked I, at. Buy, I buy I buy all of my true crime stuff and oddities through dealers because like there's this whole community of dealers and stuff um, there's the oddities um, oddities and curiosities expo that comes through uh, a few different cities they they just came through Albuquerque recently um, and that's a really a really cool place to go and highly recommend going to one of those because you sort of get to understand what you're dealing with when it comes to oddities wise and true crime wise. I mean, I got letters, nothing's actually certified, but I get my stuff through dealers that are, that have been doing this for years and they're not like newbies or anything. So I have like a letter from Richard Ramirez. I have a four page letter from Eileen Warnos. I have um, Wesley Shermantine, one of the speed freak killers. Uh, Keith Jesperson, the happy face killer. I have some artwork of his. Like, I've got all kinds of stuff when it comes to the true crime side. Oddities wise, I need more. <laughs> I can never have enough oddities. Hmm. So, oddities. Oddities uh, are. Oddities define as human skulls, human artifacts. Like, like if I was to get like a kidney in a jar. Um, uh, okay, 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 okay. So like. Uh, a bug okay. in a jar. Uh, an animal, a dead animal in a jar. Um. By the way, did you know that some animals have penis bones? Uh, I did not know that. What about yeah, probably? There you the... go. There's a fun fact for you. <laughs> okay, guys, if you didn't learn anything, you learned something today. Some animals <laughs> have penis bones. Yeah, I did not know that. And um, you know, dead animals, skulls, um, anything that'll make you either think or throw up. So, so, is so, what an oddity is, which makes sense, which makes sense. So, like a Ripley's Believe It or Not kind of museum, you're yes, gonna go through very, very okay. much. So, with that being said, there are there's a lot of chatter going on in in the chat over here. 
okay so i don't know the whole you know legal you know if it's legal or not burns over here he's saying it's not so how how i don't know the correct question but okay Okay. In order to go through I, I, and, and get I the museum, see the, I see the chat. I see the chatter in the chat room. All right, I'm gonna. I gotta clear a couple things up. There's actually only three states where it's illegal to own or sell uh, human remains. Um, you don't need any special paperwork, as long as if you have a paper trail from where you bought it from, and that person sold it to you legally and it was shipped legally and everything along that line um there there's there's nothing along that line where you need special paperwork to own there there's nothing special that you need but with those three particular states and i could be i could be mismatching one of them but it's louisiana georgia and tennessee i believe those three highly illegal louisiana i totally understand louisiana if you think about it if you if you break that down you you, you can figure that one out very quickly mm. um georgia and stuff yeah like tennessee yeah there, there's there's reasons for why they did what they did um but there's nothing illegal about it you just have to if you are ever questioned about it which i have been questioned about it you have to provide uh where you got it from and it, it just show them like I, i've actually had a cop come in my uh, come in my place once and like look at my stuff and be like where'd you get this stuff be like it's a whole community of like oddities dealers and stuff like it's just this whole huge thing there's nothing dark or nasty about it and and some sometimes you know you'll you'll get a headline that'll read oddities collector goes on killing spree or this or that or whatever but those those are the one those are the kind of people that make us look bad it's the whole community as a whole that's absolutely phenomenal and um they if you have questions they'll answer it if you have concerns they'll answer it and i've i've been told from day one that um there's nothing i need special wise to collect human remains or human pieces there are animals um that you do need uh special permission to even get taxidermied of them mm -hmm. uh you need to go through the government and and stuff like that if if that's the case well now would it be more of a endangered species yes it'd be okay. like endangered species or protected species or in, in in some cases we'll use arizona arizona has a specific cactus that grows there um it's illegal to sell out of the state and it's illegal to like chop down and everything but if you get a product that was made prior um to the time where they banned it you're fine if hmm. If anything along that line, there and there's certain there's there there are some laws, there's some international laws, obviously about human remains. There you, you, that that internationally, you got to have some special permission yep. to ship um, human remains, and you have to let the post office, the the shipper, the airplane know that you have to actually put a human remain sticker on the box that you're shipping uh, mm -hmm. it, just because so that way they understand to be careful specifically with that box now this this whole thing is different than like say a uh what do you call those uh mystery box no, they call them mystery box. Uh, they, they buy them on online crypto the boxes uh dark dark mystery boxes or what i i I can't remember what they're called, but yeah, like, it's, it's all over it's YouTube. Much, it's much more different because some of those people that are buying those dark mystery boxes, the dark web mystery boxes. Dark web, stuff, thank you. Yeah. Uh, they, there's just a, usually a bunch of shit that's randomly included. Um, 
I've never bought one of those. I will never buy one of those because I don't really trust that. Mm -hmm. I also, like I said, I bought all my stuff from dealers that have been doing this stuff for decades. Sure. Got you, got you. The guy that I bought my 300-year-old human skull from, he's been doing oddities for at least 20 years. And he has a sh he's had a shop for, I think, 10 years. So... Got you. There's there's no there's no illegalness, but there is You gotta find the proof of trail, like a trail in order to go through and do it. You just yeah. have to show the trail of where you Yeah, the trail, yeah. Run. So it makes sense. It so makes sense. Way, there's not if you are questioned about it by legal forces, they they know and they understand where you got it from. Yeah. So yeah, there, there's nothing super illegal about it. There's questions, there's questionable things. Yes, I will admit. Having a couple human skulls in my in my place is, is does make me question myself and in, in some aspects because it makes me worry. Because it's like, hey, am I bringing an extra ghost into my house or what? <laughs> yeah, you don't know what's gonna be what 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 is brought with it. Wait, wait, right, so with that being said, you do want to go through and start open, you know, open up your own exhibit and all, pay tribute to to those who have. Uh, passed away uh for you know major killers and stuff but so I, I don't remember if you you answered this question what person or were, were there any personal influences to get you to be interested in oddities into paranormal into to all this and, and, and into wanting to to get to the point where you're at now paranormal wise uh it started with me experiencing stuff as a kid i used to live in florida as a kid and uh, uh there's a lot of history in florida a lot of historical places a lot of things where a lot of dark stuff has happened i mean that's um, across the united states across the world in general but well, i mean yeah but florida is really they got just in general with the south though oh yeah there's a lot there's a <laughs> lot of darkness and yep. uh mm, things we don't like to talk about nowadays things mm. that will get both of us canceled if we talk about it you know yeah those, sure. those dark things yeah um the dark history of florida is what got me very intrigued into the paranormal because i started going to some of these places and i would see things i would see shadows i would see things out of the corner of my eye and i was I was always looking for an explanation. Then as I was growing up, I got exposed to Curse the Cowardly Dog. Yeah, that's a good one. And then and then the next thing that I got exposed to was Ghost Hunters Taps on, on TV, watching them investigate uh, and, and how they did that. And that's actually, with those three things, is how I got into the paranormal. As for the oddities and true crime, oddities without a shadow of a doubt came from Ripley's Believe It or Not. I went to the Ripley's Believe It or Not in St. Augustine as a kid, and huh. I loved it. I loved every bit of it. I thought it was the most fascinating thing in the world to see, uh, see them talking about human sacrifice and how they informed the public about how there was tribes that would do certain things um yeah we don't talk about that either <laughs> yep um to to clear to clear or clean the body of of organs basically um and how things were done and you know and then you get into the weirder human side and the animal side where you get where you see two-headed animals and you you see an animal with with an extra leg growing out of its stomach and stuff like this it teeth at the bottom of their feet <laughs> it just like fascinated me and it like drew me in immediately and i was always fascinated with like dead things and how like how decompos decomposition works and mm -hmm. all of that and true crime wise in all honesty i think what really drove me in true crime wise might might have been 9-11 I, gotcha. I really wanted to know why they did what they did why do people like this do what they do 
where they don't give a damn wh- how many people they they hurt or kill and how why just why and i started going down that route and like unsolved mysteries was like one of the big thing for me mm-hmm. i love unsolved mysteries and then getting exposed to like other other huge true crime news like i was in florida when casey anthony happened um, that was a big thing yeah yeah that was oof. that was a big thing and uh it just it just fascinated me the true crime aspect of why can these people do what they do and some of them not even feel remorse while others actually are rec- are understand what they did and actually do feel remorse like i wanted to know the psychology of it so i started doing deep dives on watching true crime stuff for a very long time um mm-hmm. and it just let one thing led to another next thing i knew i started collecting actual letters next thing i knew from there i actually started writing inmates i know you were talking about that uh you were you were working on getting into the mind and trying to understand why they did you so so tell, tell us about something i mean if you would like to talk about some experiences you had uh to with these inmates uh there there's one particular that i i talk to pretty frequently his name is uh scott kimball uh in all honesty he's a pretty nice guy um not even gonna front he did he did do some pretty terrible things uh but he, he he's definitely could i say that he's changed i don't know I didn't know him then when he was committing those things, but I can say that he's a nice guy because he's, he sends, he'll send me artwork regularly. He'll send me letters regularly. He'll call and check and see how I'm doing. You know, he, he's like, he acts like a true friend. He, he doesn't really beat around the bush when it comes to things. Um, never had any really issues. Then, then on the other spectrum, on the other side of the spectrum, I had another serial killer that I had written that just because I didn't write back to him in time, he sent me a a religious pamphlet with a bunch of his writing on it saying that the truth is coming out and he doesn't like dealing with people like me because I took too long to write and this and that and like he was just being really really shitty and i'm like oh okay cool i ain't gonna write you back again because like that's that's not cool that's not how we work things Mm. so i i've had a couple different experiences nothing too extreme and that's the thing is that most of the people that i write to are either on death row or are lifers so they're they're not i'm I'm, I'm, so is scott on death row no, but he is a lifer. Got you. Or in Got all you. technicalities, he could be a lifer. But if things if things continue going good for him, he could probably be out 15, 20 years. But even then, that's what? And he's going to be in his late 70s, I think, or some shit. So, you know, even then, there, there's, there's still a lot of things true crime wise and 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 killer wise and i don't just focus on killers either i actually have a few pieces in my collection of non-killers that didn't do any violent crimes i have uh you might have no you might know this guy but um john knock does that name sound familiar at all no so he he was arrested and thrown in prison for life for an ounce of marijuana just an ounce wow i mean he was thrown in in for life basically the same equivalent of if if he was to kill somebody he got thrown in for life basically and it's crazy um i don't i think i i i not getting into the political shit about it but trump uh i think extradite not extradited but um What's the word? Uh, I can't think of the word. Anyway, Trump signed off to have him released, so now he's released. 
Mm. Finally, after like, I think what, 15, 20 years of being in prison for, for marijuana. Yeah. Yeah. For just a simple thing. And like, it's, it's a different time now. Uh, it, it is a very, very different time now, thankfully. Yep. Um, but it's, it's very exonerated. Uh, yeah. Exonerated. exonerated. Yes, thank you. Fern. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So, have you yeah. talked to Charles Bronson? Have you ever written to Charles Bronson? This is asked from Legends. No. I I mean, I have tried to write him. Uh, I, I've also tried to... I also did before he died. I also tried to write Manson, but never got anything back. I, I've tried to write multiple really large cases, but never have really gotten any responses from like the big guys when like david burr quits uh btk never never really gotten any responses from any of like the huge guys because mm. in all honesty most of them are dead now yeah i mean you got you got what david burr quits and btk i think are the are a couple of the last last folks that are uh that were a part of like the big 70s 80s spree you know and doing a deep dive on like the like the 1970s and 80s about true crime is just like yeah it's it's all about you know it, it's the after effects of the 60s right so we get all these new people we get all these people that like got exposed to drugs got exposed to vietnam um stuff yeah. like that and yeah you could say all that was a factor and that they were a product of their current environment definitely some of them were a product of their environment and some of them were not some of them i think were born psychotic uh Maybe not psychotic, but definitely had mental breaks um, that definitely made you question why did they do what they did? Just like mm. BTK, for example, how he was – how he worked for the Forest Service and did so much community service work. So when everybody found out it was actually him, it was like, whoa, what? Everybody was shocked. Yeah. Nobody saw it coming. But that's the one thing all these guys have in common is that either one, they're going to be under the radar, 110% be under the radar, right? Or they're going to be very prominent in the community. There's no in between. They're not going to be sort of moderately there, but like, you know, donation here, donation there kind of thing. They're going to be very, very prominent in the community or they're not. And they're going to be isolated. It's just fascinating. Like the whole it, the whole aspect of it is extremely fascinating. It, it's it's very fascinating to study the human mind and to, as you said, to go through and try to understand the reasoning to why people act the way they do. And it could be, you know, the outcome of you know their surrounding. It could be an outcome of just you know a bunch of different variables to go through and, and cause them to have this this break. You know, maybe a you know a chemical imbalance. Uh, within their brain and, and all of that who knows who knows but i mean it's it's awesome to to know that you know we are studying we are trying to figure that out and it is awesome that you are doing what you're doing to to bring uh justice to to bring recognition to victims for one and and to understand the psyche or to help understand the psyche by going through and reaching out these answers that you know may or may not be solved may not be answered but you know that that's that's it's just interesting to to uh go about that and and try to make that a purpose to find a reason i guess if, if that makes sense that makes sense yeah i just i just even if you know, at the end of the day, if my museum encourages somebody to seek answers and somehow they end up becoming one of the greatest scientists or psychologists or something and they they 
so somehow develop something to mm. prevent these things from happening so much. Like, cool. I did my job. You did your job. I, I, if, if it inspires somebody, if it if it helps somebody get it through a hard time somehow or whatever, that's that's my ultimate goal is to have that. For sure. Just For sure. be able to help. And sure. I think through oddities and the paranormal and true crime, I would love to have a haunted a haunted house be my museum. Like that's my that would be like the big thing for me is I would absolutely love that. And I think that people I think that I think those three things are very taboo in a lot of areas of the world. Mm -hmm. And I think if they weren't and if we if the world accepted what they were and and started trying to deep dive these things, I think we would have answers much sooner. I think that people do need to open their minds a little bit up to There's even cases, I'll give a I'll give one of the most famous examples of paranormal and true crime merging together. Hmm. Amityville horror. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's one that's a, a good example. Yeah, one of the most famous. It's a very, we very good one. We don't know what happened. We don't. There's no scientific explanation for exactly what had happened and what had occurred in Amityville. Mm. And there's there's theories, there's this, there's that. There's some scientific data on it, but there's not enough to sit here and, and determine whether or not that house is actually haunted or not. Nobody, everybody has their own opinion about that, and I'm in the middle. I, I say that there is some proof, while I say some proof is bullshit, mm. you know? I think... I think when it comes down to it, I think those are the three things that, that are very taboo, true crime, oddities, and paranormal, that if was to become much more mainstream than they are, I think it would become very helpful uh, to the psychology world, specifically, of understanding some of these atrocities and how they work and how they do what they do. I think that's I mean, where they have that's where they have like a, a different subcategory in psych you know psychologists and they have crime scene investigators they have all this stuff I mean essentially I mean because like psychology in general is such a broad field it is so much to the human anatomy that we are trying to go through and figure out like recently concussions have been a really big thing with sports injuries that we, we I mean after so much time that we've had with you know scientists and and in all you know looking into the human anatomy we're we're finding out this so I, I i we're constantly getting new material new things that we're learning about different parts of the brain in general so i mean it's a very broad spectrum to to sit there and and, and bring it out like i i do feel that that's where you know the paranormal you know investigators where, where you know people who who have the oddities and all that stuff to to bring it to other to others attention to you know have it explain some some experiences in some abnormal situations that you know we cannot go through and explain so i mean it's just one of those things like we, we said it's 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 definitely something great to to help explain the unexplained just i don't know if we'll have the answer because we keep getting you know new things and we have people i'll always always people out there going through and doubting you know x y and z uh in in all of that uh, like one of those people and I, I can say i'm one of them but i do feel like there's energy out there and stuff like that but believe in it when i see it you know aspect so and i and i will admit as a paranormal investigator i've encountered situations where uh we we as humans do have the power to manifest things that 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 is a a, a known fact mm. uh fear 
I, I had a couple investigators that was a part of a team that I was a part of, and uh, they they fed into um, fear. They fed into that. So, for example, they on the ride to the location, they were already feeding into the fact of that there was something going on at this location. This was a private residence, okay. and we were we were under the impression that this this and this there there was attacks there was books thrown this that the other right and then like we were so like concerned about having books and objects thrown at us and us getting hurt at this location and uh it it it, it wasn't what it was i think it was more of a manifestation of fear than actual proof of anything because what <laughs> we were here we would hear things that weren't captured on the voice recorders. We would see things that weren't captured. And I think that that was just fear induced stuff that subconsciously we had already put in our heads. And I do believe that we have the capability if we go into a place to manifest things to happen. But if we do that, we're not getting real evidence. So, and so to, to go back on your points, uh, about fear do you think that plays a role for people to bring in you know certain aspects so like so my, my question on this is Zach Baggins for instance I, like I, I said he goes to and investigates with his team and a lot of these areas they have no evidence of you know paranormal activity do you think that is induced because of the fear that others hear certain things and so they 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 you know that that draws that's i don't know if stigma is the correct word but draws that attention uh to thinking that you know something is there but really isn't there i'm gonna get i'll give you an example of a location that i was at um that i i used to be a part of a group called the old gilchrist county jail ghost hunters they actually owned a jail and um very interesting things happened in that jail. My first night there, I think I was more manifesting things than anything else. But at, over time, I became adjusted with the energy and understood what was going on there. So, for example, we'll do three different investigations. We'll do one night where there was literally nothing going on. The second night, maybe a couple things were going on. And then the third night would be like, there would be a lot of things that were captured, a lot of things that were recorded, this, that, the other. I don't think that doing a location for just one night is smart because that's, in all truthness, that's not really how we do the scientific method. We, we have to we have to stick around for longer than one night. That's why... The more you fuck around, the more you find out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, so so uh, ideally, ideally, so two things. I have two questions on on this one. The members of the team does that differ based off the job? So how many people you have throughout a paranormal investigation? I mean, Is it more? If you're investigating a, a huge hospital, you're gonna want all your team members. If you have a ten team. If you have a 10 member team, you're going to want everybody there. Even, even if they do manifest things, you want, you want some different types of energy when it comes to people, because you and I, we, we, we vibe, but we're, we're on two different energy spectrums. Mm -hmm. We have two different energy spectrums and mm -hmm. that's really cool to see people that are much more mellow and going into a place and then you have someone that's like me where it's i'm super excited all the time and i'm just bouncing off the walls and you get different responses with things so yeah i do i do believe that different people do bring different stuff to the table and do cause different stuff to happen and now you know, do you think it, that that case of the different energies causing uh, I, so it, it would reflect in different reactions of, of a paranormal mm -hmm. entity so okay yeah, so uh, 
Okay. Let's say, let's say you take, let's say, I'll give an example of an experiment that was done, um, that I had conducted, um, at the old South Pittsburgh hospital where I just went in and nobody else went in with me. It was just me. And we were, I was, I wa walked upstairs and I had started conducting an EVP session. And I just said out loud, I said, you know what? I think I'm just going to call this EVP session done. And I just sat in the dark and just listened. That's when I, that's when I knew that my energy would is is a bit of an attractant uh to things mm. because i experienced something that not many people do and that was a shadow person getting straight up into my face i didn't find it terrifying i found it very intriguing and i wanted to know why i just witnessed what i witnessed because even though it is absolutely pitch dark in there your eyes do adjust in the dark yes 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 you can develop a a a small amount of night vision and you you know when it goes from being like just normal darkness and then just like something got up in my face so did you have a, a dance off or were you trying to go through and perform the nicholas cage face off movie yeah I was with this trying to perform yeah, Nick, Nick Cage face off. There you go. Yeah, heck yeah, Nick Nicholas Cage, man. Yeah, man yeah. on his own. By the, by the way, that's a great movie. I love that movie. Good movie. That's it's a good fantastic movie. Fantastic movie. Great movie. Great movie. John Joe uh, Johnny T. Yep. Dart. <laughs> okay, my headphones started messing up. Freak me out for. Oh, Chris is over here having some paranormal activity. He's like, oh man, you got in his head, paranormal. You got in his head. <laughs> this man had a dance off. <laughs> this guy over here doing the orange justice and stuff. <laughs> Someone would go out of, go out of my pants. Oh man. But uh now that that's that's crazy, man. That's crazy. Like you know, as as you're sitting there and it's it's I did say that, you know, I, I have felt energy and I have seen things, but like at the same time, I don't know if it was my mind tr playing tricks on me. If you get what our, I'm our, saying, so I'm, I'm very good at that. I will fully admit to that. I, so I've seen, I've, I've thought I've seen things, but then I like, I recheck myself and I'm like, okay, that might have not have been what it was. This guy Never made sure mind. his uh, gray sweatpants were still intact. Right. <laughs> so I will tell you a situation that I had. I, I so I was at uh, this is when I was like, maybe. It was when I was in high school, like 15, 14, 15, 16, something like that. Uh, I usually would go through and hang up, hang out in my parents' bonus room. I'd go through and game and all that stuff up there. And so I was getting ready to go downstairs and somebody was going through and they ran upstairs and they they played. I had one of my friends over and they, they played um, and turned the light off. And so I'm getting ready to go downstairs to my room and stuff like that. And so I see this figure on the stairs like crawl up crawl up the stairs and it like i had a very loud screech that came out like uh -huh. i'm not gonna lie a very loud screech I'm, I'm grateful my parents did not wake up because my parents room is like literally downstairs from the stairway and stuff like that and so it, it, it crawled up to me and it disappeared it crawled up to me and disappeared <clears throat> and, and and so yeah i've had a situation like that but I've also had a, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm religious and stuff like that. So I had a situation where I, I felt the presence among me. So like I, like I said, I know there are things out there. I just, I don't know at that time when I was going, like when I saw it come up the stairs, like if that was my mind playing tricks on me for being tight. So if that makes, makes sense. So like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to go through and explain that. So. I, yeah well i mean yeah. it, could, it could be a mixture of the two i mean that is a possibility too where thing where things know but i have to ask are you one of those people that just know it exists and you just want to like in the back and and you know like in the back of your mind it exists but you just like want to try to refuse that it exists because you don't want to acknowledge it and you don't want to give it power 
because that is a thing where you acknowledge things and you get and you end up giving it power i i feel like that's that's the situation because i mean there, as as you said there's been like different situations where people have been possessed and some of these like you don't know what what the entity is and so i guess i can say that you nailed it on the coffin there that i don't want to give it power to no. Yeah, there's no need there's no need to give it power or no, yeah. you know when 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 it comes down to it no matter if it's demonic or or interdimensional or inhuman or whatever answer you want to come up with it, acknowledging these things does give them power and yeah. does uh give them the energy they need to be able to communicate now being communication to comparison to communication and being straight up slapped across the face from a ghost are very two different types of energy levels oh, oh wow you know, <laughs> know that for sure and i've seen people actually get pushed by invisible forces before in person and like i, I don't have an explanation for that so my question what, on what my that? question on that my question my question did on that you, did you just get uh will smith yeah, I got Will Smith back. Dude, he said something about smacking across the floor. So my question upon that. So you seen you seen people get slapped and pushed across the floor and stuff like that. So now do you watch martial arts movies? Yes. So do you feel like the reenactment of a martial arts movie should be somewhat to a comparison of this? betrayal of somebody getting pushed across the floor meaning in a way yeah okay okay so who does it better uh if we're talking about martial artists bruce lee all the way bruce lee no i'm, I'm talking about like the, the movies oh. who does it better like a movie or like being in real life well obviously um, bruce lee's one on, on his own i mean let's be I, real I mean, I mean bruce lee bruce lee is god tier like nobody can touch him nobody remotely I mean, I mean, let's let's be real. Jackie Chan. I'm kidding. He's Jackie easy. Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan still resides in the top three, in my opinion. But I still think that Bruce Lee is still better. <laughs> no, no, Bruce Lee is one of a kind. <laughs> Bruce Lee is one of a kind. Jackie, like Jackie nobody Chan can go through and touch. He 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 does kick ass. He does. He does. Seen it personally, you won't believe it. Exactly. Exactly. Uh. Calm down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's on he's on his own. I think uh Jackie Chan's really good, but I I some people would com would compare uh well Jet Li being would Jet Li be one of your top? Or do you have someone else out there? You said top three. Um Michael J. White all the way. So we'll go through and look up Michael J. White. You know, I, I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say a name that doesn't very get much notoriety, and I think that's Jason Statham. I it had is, a feeling is, you were gonna go through and say Jason Statham. I I think he's he's good. I think he's good. I think he's great. He's great. Well, you think he's he's, he's, he's number two? Amazing, amazing martial art things. Um, and he he has studied martial 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 Michael J. White. He has, he has all that under his belt. Um. I love I I do enjoy a good fighting movie. I do. Um uh yeah, Michael J White. Uh, huh? He's good. Michael J White, he's a good one. But I wouldn't say he's yeah. he's top. I had a feeling that's who you were talking about, Michael J White, the the black black guy. What about uh what do you think about um Oh god, what is his name? Seagal. The goal, man, come on, let's let's go watch some Seagull movies. This guy is literally ripped all on YouTube. Okay. His 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 Thank his you. acting is is not that good. His his whole whole uh approach with with karate and all that, he's just he's not no, no. It's funny to go through and watch. It's I know. It's it's pure entertainment. There's nothing yeah. nothing more, nothing less. It's just pure entertainment. And it's just a good thing to make fun of. <laughs> Bro, just look up interviews on, on those actors, and he's definitely legit and not a... Well, yeah, yeah, I, I, so I I get you on that. I get you on that. Yeah, he's a big... He is a, he is a dick. Seagal is a dick. Yeah. 
I've heard nothing but negative things about him on interviews and stuff. Yes. It's, yeah, nobody likes writing that. And, 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 that, and not, not getting into the politics of it, but like now he's like trying to speak up for Russia and stuff. What the hell? <laughs> Let's just leave that as is. Let's just leave that as is. Just exactly. leave that as is. Okay. Let's just look, that, at, that, look uh, at it as it is. <laughs> all right. So, so, so we all can agree the goal sucks ass. Yeah. Harry ass, okay. Harry All right, so ass. I'm probably he's probably gonna come over and and actually, you know what? I'm gonna go through and add some Steven Seagal to my stream of him fighting a green screen. And that's gonna be a redemption, guys. We're gonna go through and do that. Now, I will say Jean Claude Van Damme. What do y'all? What is y'all's thoughts on Jean Claude? I know he is a kickboxer, but thoughts thoughts on that? Uh, I so, mean, his movies aren't bad. Oh, he's, a 90s, he's a 90s. He's a 90 star horrible. and. and JVC, dude. JVC, his comeback, dude, was great. Was great. A documentary about himself. He broke the third dimension. Great. Great. Yeah. Okay, moving on now. Yeah, okay, moving on now. Uh, so let, let's let's go through and look at this. We'll get back to some content, give a little break from paranormal. Uh, because we've we've talked about some goals you've had, we've talked about some other stuff, and I'm you guys are loving it, stuff like that. So back to content creating. What are some goals you have as a content creator? Uh, I would absolutely love to um, start ma making a living off of this, off of being a streamer and a content creator. Mm. It's just, uh, you know, the, the, the difficultiness on here of getting to um, affiliate status really is difficult uh especially when someone like me deals with overthinking a lot and when like i have i do have people that come in they don't like subscribe to my channel or anything like that and they just watch it and like it, it sort of beats you down a little bit and it makes me overthink it's just something that i personally have got to get over because like I know that I put the work in, I just am lazy about that, and I allow my overthinking to take over. Um, doesn't help with having autism and ADHD in the same basket. So mm. you know, like that, having both of those is 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 very rough. Uh, but I do um, hope that someday, like I can do that, and that. The other thing I hope for is that maybe somehow my content would help somebody, would would be there. Somebody, you know, needs. This is ZDP Network bringing you. One second, I got it right here. Give me a second. Pause it. Pause it. Some poor content creator loose. You happen to see the gentleman displayed on screen. Be aware to get tons of fails as he seems to not know what he is doing, and he apparently is trash at every game he touches. Wait, that wasn't the message. That wasn't the breaking news. It was intended for a, a raid. Damn it! Yo, AD, thank you so much for the raid, brother. How was the stream? I saw you were going through and, and you're playing some Madden on stream. I was in and out lurking and stuff like that. But how's it going, man? I know you're you're going through and doing doing big things. You're working on trying to go through and and, and uh do your subathon over the three days i think what today is your, your last day for that yes there's my new raid i'm very excited about that we're going through and, and having our episode with the second day okay second day so we're having our episode with paranormal mafia right now he's talking about some stories of some paranormal stories and all that but right now we're getting to the point where we're talking about his story with with um his content and stuff like that but it's a very interesting you know story to hear and just a different uh subject that i mean i don't i don't really have too much knowledge about and to, to go through and hear this other side hear his story it's great so guys go through and stick around hang out and if you are interested let me go through and give you a shout out real quick i'm gonna give a shout out to athletic dan one second and i'm gonna go through Make sure you go through and check this man out. He's he's. I thought he went through and he's already got his affiliate. Okay. I've been working on trying. I mean, helping him out get his affiliate and stuff like that. So 
but he he's definitely been struggling with that so ooh, a zelda one Go through and check out Paranormal Mafia. Let's try to talk to this dude again. Yeah, I know. Breaking news kicks in. Examine this statue further, but who knows what I might find out. So yeah, go through and check these guys out. Make sure you if you're gonna go through and drop them a follow, give them a time of your day. Give them an opportunity to go through what you guys have given me. Give them some love. All right, let's get back to it. All right, I am back. I am so sorry about that. Got rated in between. Got rated in between. Got rated in between our conversation. So you were going through and talking about some goals you had and uh, some fr frustrations along the way uh, with, with that. So I, 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 I know a lot of people, as you were saying, a lot of people okay. aspire to want to make this a, a job in, in all. So I, 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 I I know in order to go through and make it a job, there's got to be money and stuff like that. But that's one thing, especially in the beginning, you can't go through and focus on. I mean, it's it's a bonus. It's a plus and, 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 and all. But that could be a reason why you're overthinking it because you have that mindset, you know? Yeah. To where it, it kind of overshadows what content you want to go through and, and bring up. Like, you go through and you play certain games. And you've had, I mean, I've, I've been in a lot of your streams, hanging out, you know, being there and trying to get people in there to help you get to that affiliate. Because, I mean, I, I like your content. I like, you know, what uh, what you've done and all that. Now, on a, on a note, why not go through and talk about what we're talking about today and show some stuff if you can uh, on stream? Maybe people will be interested in that. Because I know you said you're working on a YouTube series, but this can go through and kill two birds in one stone. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's it's yeah. very, it's it's you're very knowledgeable when it, when it comes to you know information you know about this. Maybe that's more upon your niche, and maybe that will go through and help you know with the growth and stuff. Because there are people who are interested in that. There are people who you know like to go through and do the dark web mystery boxes. Which I mean, you don't do that, but there are there are certain things that that people are driven to go through and watch, and maybe that can be something you can go through and do. Since you want to go through and enlighten people, you know, and and bring some knowledge to this particular basis, telling your stories and all that, maybe that will help out, you know, going through and just chatting and, and, and all of that. And you don't need to have the best equipment to go through and do that. Just getting started is 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 the big thing. And you've you've done that. And I know you haven't had the most consistent schedule. You, 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 I know we've talked and you've been trying to go through and get yourself you know, into a consistent schedule. And I feel, as you said, with the fact that you overthink, it brings you back to square one and you feel like you're going into the cycle. And, and all. which I mean, that's that's very daunting as a content creator in general. I have dealt with it. I a lot of people have dealt with it where you don't feel like you're good enough. You don't feel like you, you, you're making the impact because you're not you're not seeing the numbers that you want to see. But with that being said, streaming as a whole is a long shot, a long haul, a, a journey along itself. It's what you've learned from day one, the people you've met. And I've said this in, in, in a lot of my interviews with everybody. It shouldn't be about the money. It should be about the experiences, the friends, the the, the everything that, that you've, you've learned in this journey. And that's just something that I, I've, I've learned in, in, in all that. So, like I said, I enjoy your content. I enjoy your friendship. I enjoy all of that. And I try my best to be in, you know, any stream that I've seen you go live and stuff. And I do enjoy your content. So, I mean, like I said, I maybe... I do appreciate that. I also enjoy, I do appreciate the words of wisdom coming from you uh, through your Discord channel, too. And even privately that you have told me. Uh, I do appreciate that, for sure. And, it's, and, it, and, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, you're you know in all consideration like you're a really good friend and you're probably one of my bigger supporters and i i just want to say thank you phoenix because like I, I jumped into this i literally jumped into this streaming shit head first and was like I, I didn't know anything and you're like one of the first people i ever like started reaching out to and like next thing i know i'm a part of your discord and like you know it's just it's been nice it's been really really nice and 
even the other people in there are really awesome and they kick ass. And so, so it's just one it's, it's, it's just one thing, man. I mean, it's it's a journey, it's a, it's experience you gotta go through and learn. Like I went through and I didn't know what I was doing when I first started. I still don't know everything that I'm going through and doing. I'm I'm changing constantly and just learning from you know failures and still trying to go through them and and work on making an impact and stuff. And not everything's gonna work out, but you can't let that discourage you. I mean, if that was the case, I wouldn't be still streaming. Because like, there's been a lot of times where I guts guts, but I keep going at it. I keep going at it and. I, I want to see people succeed and that's one of the reasons why I started doing this aspect to you know as I said to share the story of fellow content creators because I know how difficult it is especially in twitch especially in content creating to go through and no ways to go through and, and network to go through and just you know put yourself out there to people it's very 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 it's a lot it's a lot Especially if you're, if you don't have, if you're not an outgoing person, if you're not, if you're not someone who, who's, uh, meant to go and, and be that way. So, and even then, like, if you're an outgoing person, like if you expect something and it doesn't turn out that way, it can be very discouraging. Like I've had yeah. a lot of, I've had a lot of tournaments. I've had a lot of events that have frustrated me and, and all. So with that being said, I don't want to go through and keep making this about me. I just want to go through and no, and no. talk it's, about it's that not, point. It's, it's not really about you. You're giving me honest advice and 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 pinpointing me in the right direction. I mm. really do appreciate that. It's not you're not, no. Don't be like it's sorry. It's about me. That's not that's not that's not how it's sounding at all. At least to me, that's not how it's sounding. I don't know about everybody else that's watching or that could be listening later on, but that's not that's. I, I'm totally viewing it as you giving me some really good advice because you're a much bigger streamer than I am. You have a bit bigger following than I do. And I do like look up to you in a way. So like I, I, I'm very appreciative of these words of wisdom coming from Phoenix. I we appreciate need, that. We need, we, need, uh, we need to start having some words of wisdom. We need to have a words of wisdom corner uh, in, in the uh, Discord. And, That's and what I try on, on, on TikTok, man. I try to do that on TikTok. I try to go through and motivate people on TikTok. But I mean, it is very true. Fern, you knocked it, you know, on the coffin. It, it's Einstein failed a lot himself. But paranormal, thank you for the bits, man. You don't have to go through and do that. Your, your presence being no, here, give me I, a time of your day is all I ask for, man. It's, it's me showing appreciation, man. I, I appreciate it. Like, I really do. I appreciate you as a friend. I appreciate you as a streamer. You know, you're, you're a cool guy. You, Appreciate that. You definitely, you definitely are one of the better streamers that deserve a much bigger following. I appreciate for that. Sure. I, I, I appreciate that, man. Uh, this, this, yeah, it's not about me. It's not about me. It's about you, man. It's about you. All right. No, so, I know. I know. I do. You know, we, we still, it's still your show. You know, we still gotta, we still, I still gotta tip the hat to you and, and give you a good old thank you. You know. Oh, I appreciate that. So you you've you've nailed a few frustrations. You've 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 talked about you know a few goals you've had and all. So what are some things that you have learned within this journey? So so to, to, to go through and talk journey. about what what Legend asked earlier. So something you've learned, and then on top of that, after you answer that, what is something? What is something that uh, you would you? wish you can apply to yourself when you first started streaming things that i learned is that uh for sure it, it is it is the streaming community is is a rough place um you know that that it, it's it's very selective and um we improving my content could definitely be better uh as for something that i could change uh uh schedule schedule that that's that's something if i could actually have a much better schedule and and mindset to actively uh at least at least two times a week uh stream even for just an hour and a half uh would be would have been much better i probably would be at affiliate status if it wasn't for my non-existent schedule <laughs> so so my recommendation on that uh because 
I know people have them have their set schedule and stuff like that. Why not go through and do it on a weekly basis? Like go through and say, hey, this is, you know, look at the month, you know, kind of plan in your head. You know, this is what I'm going to go through and do. But then thank you for hydrate legends. Uh, but then go through and post it weekly because it, it could be subjected to change. Like I, that's what I do in Discord uh, because it, it seems to work for me. Like I'll have a schedule posted by Sunday and then it'll be usually like, you know, whatever days I, I can Monday or whatever. And I'll have like a nice little graphic so people go through and follow with that. Why not do something like that? That way you can go through and keep, you know, pushing yourself to, you know, get the content out there uh, on top of you know, all of that. Now, I also would recommend looking at your previous content to kind of critique as well. And that's, that's the best way to to look at, you know, ways you can improve. Because, I mean, we are our biggest critic. I mean, I can you can come to me and ask me one thing and I don't I don't see everything that you know maybe Susie or Joe or anybody else who pops in the stream may see so I mean I just you know from a broad scheme and from being in your streams and from seeing this is you know what I I can suggest and from what stuff that have, has worked for me I mean, it's a yeah so no that makes sense but yeah so I mean they say consistency is key which I mean it is a big key but I think those viewers that, you know, come in or your usual, like they would understand, you know, what's going on. Cause we all have in real life stuff. We all have, we all have, you know, certain things that come in our life. We want to go through and help out support with, you know, other people and continue to network and stuff. So, um, yeah, just, you know, try, try to go through and, and, and maybe on, on Twitter, you know, I know you're, you're active on Twitter. Uh, sometimes when you try to go through and post on on TikTok, maybe go through and make like a little graphic and say, "Hey, this is what I'm going to go live X, Y, and Z," and just keep going at it, keep going at it, keep going at it, and don't focus on the big number. Focus on the uh, the minimal, like per, like a percentage change, and, and, and all. Uh, if you have one new follower or you know a, a new viewer that comes in, that's a you know a better percentage to go through and keep bumping you up. And so focus on that and not. You know, a uh, the stream was another dud and stuff like that because people, you know, didn't want to come see what I what I what I put out. Doesn't mean you suck or anything like that. Just people are busy, and you gotta look at it yeah. like this: we're all small streamers, and we're just a small fish in the pond. So there's there's that. But yeah, go ahead and uh, going uh, going back to telling yourself the experience. What would it be? If you can go through and tell yourself an experience to when you first started. You there? Yeah, no, I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm just okay. thinking. I'm, I, I can't really think of anything off the top of my head. Okay, uh, we'll get back to that. We'll get back to that. Uh, you had a choice of a con of console what would it be and why is it xbox i would love more i would love to have a good computer where i could game on my computer so i can jump on steam and play some of those awesome ass steam games to be honest that's not my question that's my my question paranormal what console my my console <laughs> of preference is n64 okay n64 oh hey 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 i'm old so, school all the way i love old school i just i love it the retro, the retro. Hey, nothing wrong with the retro. So that's one thing. If you have a switch, if you go through and you buy the expansion pack, they have mm -hmm. where you go through and play certain N64 games. Now, I know the cloud base isn't as big. Uh, they're working on trying to go through and get it. I haven't, I haven't went through and invested in that. I don't. I think it's a waste of money. But they have Ocarina of Time. They have a lot of different games on there. Now, for the bang for your buck, I think, and I've said this, Xbox Game Pass is legit. Oh, I, I love Game it. Game Pass is amazing. It's legit. I, I love it. I love it a lot. So N64, I, I can uh, wholeheartedly agree with you. However, I feel for me, it would be my Xbox 360 because one of my favorite games of all time. NCAA 14 is on it. I still got the copy and I still I still can go through and play it. So I've been going through and making sure that thing is in pristine shape so I can go through and, and uh, play, play the game that I, I, I endure and love so much. If we're talking uh, about online gameplay and stuff, and uh, the 
the Xbox 360 definitely has made its mark. I would put it at number two. Number two? Without a shadow of a doubt. So Xbox 360 was great. Now, I will say PS2 is up there. PS2 is up there. PS3 was, was shit. Uh, but the Xbox One, I will, I will say I, I love the Xbox One for the fact it was a whole entertainment system. But what drew me to go through and get the Xbox One over all the other consoles was because of Titanfall being exclusive. I, I love the concept yeah, Titanfall. of Titanfall. When when Titanfall came out, that was like I I I did enjoy that. I'm not even gonna fry. Like I can bitch about the game. I can sit there and make up all kinds of shit. But like in 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 all realities, uh, it was just a fun all the way around game. And sure um it was new it was something new to the field like we didn't we didn't experience something like that before where it was just basically strictly online and it was this weird fighting game mixed with a shooting game mixed with giant robots and it was just like whoa this is this is cool this is different this is so out of left field and it looked cool like when we were when we were being shown video of it like before the xbox one came out and stuff like that was one of the games they were pushing and like damn that that looks so cool the graphics look so damn cool then you start playing and it's like oh shit this is addicting Uh (laughs) uh-oh yeah yeah not for sure for sure uh so uh outside of streaming and gaming we obviously know you have a hobby we were talking about the paranormal and the oddity collection is there anything else outside of that that would be a hobby of yours uh something i just recently got into i know it's sort of corny and sort of weird but and out of left field for me and particularly with what i deal with and and what i collect but i started making earrings (laughs) oof i gotta i gotta see some uh you yes still show me some pics on that Hey, everybody go through and drop some salty popcorn emotes because he said it's corny. Don't say collecting fingernails. Oh, yeah, collecting fingernails. <laughs> oh, I, I actually, there's actually somebody that I know of in, in the oddities community that actually collects fingernails and toenails. And like, I'm not even shitting you. I've seen how many jars this, this dude has. And like, we're, we're not talking a couple dozen jars. We're talking like, probably thousands of jars of fingernails and toenails so are they piled by themselves or are they in uh jars with uh what, what's the stuff that they have inside the, the preservation you oh, have to go through just, it it's just by themselves it's just all by themselves Oof. it's yeah just... thank you for the commercial after this commercial break <laughs> uh but yeah no okay oh, that, that, that's, that's interesting a lovely commercial break because i'm seeing sonic and now i'm hungry for sonic that's lovely. Ooh, some sonic what's your favorite thing on sonic Oh, um, gotta. Go. I have to. I, I. I have a. I have a really like strong loving for tater tots. So like tater, the tater 100. tots. One hundred. The best tater tots in the nation, man. The in the nation. Hey, any, hey, anybody who goes to Sonic, is it t- tater tots or is it going to be French fries for y'all in the chat? Uh, so uh, yeah. With that being said, do you have any questions for me? Do you have any questions for me, Paranormal? Um. Yeah, you know what? If there was something where you, if if there was something that you you could change about your past when you started uh, uh, streaming, what would that be? What 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 kind of like, what would that be? So that's a that's a really good question. Uh, one thing that I wish that you did differently. I I, I did differently. Day. I, I, so I, I feel to learn to balance to, to learn to balance because one one thing that that gets me is when I am on to something I focus on it and so I shut everything out and I focus on it and I focus on it and I try I, I get obsessed to the point so to a past me I would say don't don't get too obsessed with trying to reach out to people take the time know people and 
let your light shine. There's nothing to go through and worry about because if 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 your content is good, people will be there. The reason why I say that is because it got to the point where it was unhealthy for me. I got frustrated. I took a lot on to myself and I even outlashed on my family, my my wife and my son. And so I had to sit back and I had to literally hone and sit there and uh, be real with myself. Because I mean, as a lot of people, we, we want to go through and make something out of this. And at the same time, I mean, you don't want to go through and put yourself to wit's end where it's, it's unhealthy. So that, that would be my biggest thing to, to tell my past self to, to let myself know. Cause I, I worry, I worry. I worry. And it gets me to, to being where I focus on that. So it's going to be all right. Good life, baby. That's so cool. I haven't done that one yet. That's beautiful. Do they do they sell knuckleheads or tails? Ah, no knucklehead, no knuckles. I saw no knuckles. that comment and I was I was resisting laughing out so hard. Oh God, that's great. I love that. Yo, Cloud, thank you, dude. Cloud, thank you again, dude. You don't have to come in and just drop biddies like it's hot, dude. I appreciate that though. So, with that being said, is there any other question you have for me, Cloud? Or I'm sorry, Cloud. Sorry, paranormal. I was reading Cloud. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Um, if since I'm still an upcoming streamer, if there if there isn't anything that you haven't said already, it, would there be something else advice wise that you could say? Yeah, I told myself, man, breathe. Everything's gonna be all right. We're our biggest critics. Okay. And I mean, not everybody is here to like our material. Not everyone's gonna go through and 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 you know what? Like Fern said, be yourself. Be who you were you were created to go through and be, and you know, show that knowledge, show that expertise, show that that passion. And I guarantee it'll shine. It'll it'll shine. It'll shine. If you if you're passionate about something, it'll shine. Awesome. All right, guys. Let's go through and open up some Q and A for for some paranormal mafia. Is there anything you guys want to go through and ask this man that you guys haven't had answered? I know we've been going through and you know answering throughout. But is there anything you guys are interested in that would you you would like to go through and ask him uh with his whole paranormal with his whole oddities with this you know his journey is there anything you would like to go through and ask him i'm gonna go through and ask him now i'm gonna go through and give this man another shout out i'm gonna give you a shout out as well cloud Bing bong. where have you been oh yeah yeah so that's actually another thing i had to go through and ask but yeah where have you been so you go ahead and talk about a few spots that you've been. I think Hallmark wasn't here on most of it. Where have I been? So Hallmark's asked, where have you been? Where'd you come from? Where'd you go? Kind of night, Joe. And then Legends yeah. asked, how long have, have you been a content creator? Uh, in all technicalities, I started uh creating content basically when covid started uh i did it as like a therapeutic thing because like let's be honest when covid like originally started like it was absolutely chaos and it was really depressing and yeah so like i i i used it as an outlet i used it initially as that and um where have i been i have been dealing with uh my overthinking and depression and uh i also dealt with a very close friend basically backstabbing me so i i've been in my head a lot the past few months and it sort of didn't really want to
push any of my trauma or push anything on anybody. So I sort of just kept my, to myself for a while because, you know, like trying to find mental help, uh, mental health help uh, is, is very hard, especially when you get told, hey, we can have you on a waiting list, but it'll be about two years. That doesn't really help. So I have a question on that. I have a question on that. Do you think there's too much as a uh, positive toxicity? Do you feel like that helps or hurts mental health? Positive toxicity. Have you heard of it? Um, I, I've, I've heard a little bit. I haven't really like done a lot of looking into it. So I don't really know a whole lot. You, mm. you know what I mean? Like I, I, I don't know. If, what do you? Can you give me an example? So, so for instance, like when when uh, something negative comes up and someone's like, uh, just keep your head high, keep moving forward, stuff like you know, comments that uh, are meant to be a, a term of motivating one, but it's it's like literally. How, how I would say masculine, you know, masculine toxicity is where it's it, there's certain things that are said to just keep brushing off, like don't don't allow your emotions to to be out there. If that makes sense, if that answers your question. So uh, do you? Yeah, that sort of answers. I mean, I think that positive toxicity does um, does cause problems with people. Me, on the other hand, being the kind person I am, I, I don't view it. I've never viewed it as that. I mean, mm. I might have, like, lashed out against people that have said that just because that's not really what I want to hear at that specific time. But they don't. But they didn't know that it, it, at the time. They didn't, like, they didn't know what was going on in my head. So, like, mm. it's not fair. And I fully, like, I, I, I apologize when I did that. And that, that wasn't very uh, fun fond of me to do and i recognize that and like i realize that i've also been doing a lot of pushing thing pushing people away because of my emotions and stuff like that too because like they'll be like oh you'll be fine you just gotta push through it you'll be fine this that That's, yeah know, one so thing like, yeah when 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 in all honesty i i live off a of disability i don't really and i don't drive I I sometimes get in these ruts where I'm in my head more than I should be. Um, and I've tried getting a job. I just like just things just don't seem to be in my favor. I don't know why. Uh, I, I can try to sit here and point fingers and say, oh, yeah, these people don't want to hire me or this or that or whatever. Or, you know, just try to be angry at the world. But. What does being angry at the world get you? It gets you nowhere. That's what I've It makes you a better person. Over the past few months. It makes you a better person. And uh, so you just got to have an open heart with that. And I, I feel you wholeheartedly on that. Like, you, you got you to gotta take ownership for, for your actions and stuff. And I feel you on that. But it, it yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's that. So that's where I've been. And I, I'm going to try to be a little bit more active. I do plan. Like I said, on uh, streaming uh, Amori, uh, I'm, I think I'm gonna do it Friday. I think I'm gonna say screw it and stream on Friday night. Um, you do. I remember I do have that event on Friday. Not just trying to go through and. Uh, oh shit! That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I'm not trying to go through and put that. Time, yeah. What time is that again? Uh, 9 p.m. CST. It's gonna be uh, tournament selection day for okay. the hashtag Fortnite tournament I'm, I'm hosting. But I digress. Uh, so. Yeah, so yeah, uh yeah, I mean if you stream Friday, I'll definitely pop in there. So with that being said, Fern, or it depends on what time you, you, you do stream though. So, uh Fern asked, so do you so do you read about the conjuring activities from movies that are based on true events? Alright, so the conjuring movies and the Warrens, that's that's a very large discussion, but I can really break that down. Some I personally believe that some things are over exaggerated in the movies. Um, obviously, because you know you need you need to bring in viewers. You need to bring in people that are going to spend the money and, and watch it. Mm. There are some things that they they portray in those movies that are not what happened. And 
I am actually, I was friends for quite a while. I don't know if he deleted his Facebook or whatever, but I was friends with the nephew of Ed and Lorraine Warren. And he he was very expressive over the fact that Hollywood is just hollow, Halloweening their their life stories and making a mockery of what really went down and he he just doesn't really appreciate how things are being handled um uh, when that when that occurred i know that james gunn had reached out to him at one point uh to try to fix things that so, so some of the things are obviously like they they met a middle ground they had to have met a middle ground because like you know, I, I do think that there are things that happen in the Conjuring movies that are true. Um, like if you read if you read the books that are all uh, that all depict this stuff, they're all written by Ed and the Rain Warren, and they have the, their interviews and their research and and stuff like that in those books. You're gonna have a much better idea of what occurred at those places. And you can come up with your own conclusions uh, with what happened. As for my opinion, my opinion is I think the truth somewhere lies in the middle of yeah, the yeah. books, the movie, um, and their own personal accounts and their stories that they've told over the years. I do believe that the truth lies somewhere in the middle, but I think over time it's become over-exaggerated. Uh, yeah, the, the right, one, the right know, actually said that. that. I know for a fact that the Warren Museum has multiple, multiple cursed objects that are definitely have energies attached to them that I think are very negative. If they're demonic or not, I don't know. Uh, I, I did, da I, I will admit that I did, because of the Warrens, I did dabble in understanding demonology a little bit. I didn't do a deep dive like I should have, but it does give you a bit, bit of a better idea, even if you just do a general little investigative research thing into demonology. You, you still sort of see the dots. You connect the dots. I, so, I, I also do think that the Warrens may have exaggerated some stuff. Uh, I, I, I feel I, like a lot of stories can be exaggerated. I mean, that's the thing about like certain stories as we go through over time certain things are more overwhelming or more exaggerated than what they originally were it's like viking stories or anything like that i feel like this is the same exact kind of ordeal that is portrayed through the lens because like i'm not going to tell the story or a situation the same that you would or you know vice versa or you know somebody else they, they will tell it differently not you know verbatim so obviously no, no, the coffin. Uh, the stories that are you know portrayed in movies are or in books are just a, a lens from that particular person, you know. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, there was another question here. Do you so from Cloud Lightwalker? Do you do any other kind of content other than paranormal content, and if so, what kind? I. I mean, other than the gaming content that I do, um, I mean, I have my paranormal stuff that I've done. I've been on a couple paranormal and true crime podcasts. Um, I, I, the, the heavy thing that I really dabble in, and, and you're right, I, I, I'm going to go back to something that you said. I should start including more true crime talking and more uh, paranormal talking in my uh content because i think that that would bring more people uh to that and and i'm i think i'm gonna apply that to myself uh when i stream next i think i'm gonna try that and see how that goes for sure for that, sure see if it flows good um, for sure but so. I, I i i do dabble in uh like i said a little bit ago uh making earrings i know that that's way out of left field in comparison hey to make you a merch video. store make you a merch store man i actually have an inst i actually for my museum and my earring thing i both i have instagrams 
And same I name, right? Same name, Paranormal Mafia? Uh, no, I don't have an Instagram for Paranormal Mafia, but I do have, um, I do have my, I don't think I've ever actually told you what my museum is. Yeah, go ahead. Tell us, tell us. The, the name of my museum is going to be called the Abominable, Abominable Museum. Abominable? So what's the inspiration behind that? Well, if you think about it, oddities and true crime, what's one, what's one of the words that comes to mind? Abominable. True, true. It's very true. You know, like, it's just a general Bad word bread. for something that most people don't like or think is scary. Um, and yes, true crime is scary. It is it is a very huge part of our life, and it is scary. Uh, oddities, you know, seeing a two-headed snake or or a two-headed duck or or you know something that's either going to make you think or gross you out. Like I have, I said it. I said it earlier. I have a blood painting, and this blood painting is actually painted with my blood that I sent a painter to paint this in my blood and there's actual hair from both from uh from two different serial killers uh as a part of this painting somebody would probably think that that's really gross and maybe you know dry vomit or some shit i don't know so how much but blood like, did you have to give up for this painting just just one little just one small vial okay okay so like what he, uh he has uh the, the painter the the painter is uh Jeremy Lee Pauly, he, he's absolutely an amazing painter. Uh, same with his, his uh, I don't know if his girlfriend or wife or what right now. I, I'm not, I'm not paying attention right now. Um, but they're both absolutely phenomenal. Jeremy is uh, one of the people that I have dealt with in the past for uh, Human Remains. Um, he... Uh, I bought a I bought a couple slivers of a human brain from him before. Whoa. Whoa. Is this gonna be part of your museum? Yeah. So so do you know where the brain or who's the brain matter is to? No, it's just from a scientific it's a, it's a it's from somebody that donated their body to science and ah uh, got you got you okay that's that's where a majority of these pieces do come from is from science collections or teacher collections or so you're not getting any like monkey brains or anything like that you know that no that, that no. delicacy that some people go through and eat i couldn't no, do it if it, was mon- if it was monkey brains it probably would have already been fried in my pan i probably would have already tried it to be honest i i i could not <laughs> i could not i've seen i've seen some videos on on youtube of uh like some older videos uh I remember with that one where it was all about the cannibals and stuff that everybody thought it was real but it was not real um, it was like green hell but it was an older one uh, cannibal holocaust cannibal Hol- oh, holocaust yeah cannibal yeah holocaust? oh my god i think they were the, on that video the, on that video like, it'd be- that, that movie stirred up is so damn funny yeah like i remember when i first watched that i was like this is really like this is this is not okay. Something about this feels very wrong. Um, Green Inferno was another one. Yes, yeah, so Green that, Inferno was that. supposed to be like a newer version of the Cannibal Holocaust. God, there, there's just a couple scenes in that movie that make me want to mm, just don't. And don't, then it, I sit there and I play unsettled. the it forest. Makes, it makes my stomach very unsettled. Yeah, there, I, there are some things that it just, yeah, unsettling. All right. That, there, it's very... some, some, thing, some things I don't think Hollywood should depict, and I think cannibalization is probably one of those things. Yeah, yeah, it's just one of those things, man. So, uh, looks like the right 4689 would be very interesting to go through and talk to you more about paranormal stuff because he is from New Orleans, the most you know haunted city in the United States. Uh, but yeah, he said he was going to be very interested to talk to you. So maybe go through and reach out to him sometime. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, guys, uh, is there any last questions before we go through and switch up to Fortnite? This man needs to go through and practice for the tournament that's coming up. So yeah. any last questions? Going once. 
Go in twice. All right, if you guys have any questions within the stream, I'll go through and ask them. I would love to talk with you about paranormal stuff with you as well. Woo! Hey, Cloud. Yeah, Hallmark and Cloud, you hey, guys can you go through and... Screw it, Phoenix. You know what you should do? You should make you should make a paranormal and oddities corner on your on your on your Discord, so that way, you know, anybody that has questions can just shoot me some questions. I'll look into I'll that. Just, I'll, I'll just I'll just answer stuff, and all I can show stuff too. I can take pictures of stuff and show you guys some stuff too. I'll, uh, stuff that you probably wouldn't see unless you went to a museum. I'll have to think about that one, bro. Yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> I'll have to think about that one for sure, for sure. Now this is a very interesting talk, but I, I don't, I don't know if I can, I can stomach it. But yeah, with that being said, guys, Paranormal Mafia, the man, the myth, the legend himself. Anything too gross. The man, the myth. Uh, you, oh, oh, you also cosplay. Oh shit, that's right. I do. Cosplay. That's a big thing we forgot to talk about. But yeah, yeah. We can go through here talking about that when we get to the fire pit, uh, the VC for the fire pit. But yeah, you go through. You talk to people about some fi some cosplay you did. You've actually put a lot of pictures uh, within there. Where's the oh, leave yeah, button on I, Discord? I, I forgot about that. You, know what, <laughs> you know what's funny is I haven't cosplayed for a while, so I, I actually actively forgot about that. In all so the, 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 the cosplay is not for what the whole paranormal mafia stuff. It's actually like real characters, like uh negan negan being one and some other stuff like that so nothing too crazy uh there he did a really good impersonation of some of them and i just remember that he actually did that but i, I know it's been a minute since you uh you've done that because you do it professionally you, you got it done professionally and stuff like that but yeah with that being said man uh, i'll meet you over into the fire pit which is a vc inside uh zdpu if anybody wants to go through and play some fortnite meet us in there uh but the man the myth the legend himself paranormal mafia go through and check him out on twitch on TikTok and other forms of social media and stuff like that. I truly appreciate you being on, man. Uh, we've actually been talking for almost two and a half hours and time to go Damn. through again because Legends Legends has actually been dying for me to go through and start putting in some some mad lips for this man. So let's go through and give this man a, a round of applause. Y'all go through and chant PM for Par Paranormal Mafia. Show this man some love. Let's go through and throw some smoke on there. Get him an outro. All right, brother. Let's get Drop the smoke on there and I will see you. Yes, PM, 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 PM. Let's go. Shit it in there, baby. Alright, so we're gonna go through and switch over to playing some games now. Some actual games that people have been waiting for, right? How's it going, guys? That will wrap up the latest episode of the Fire Pit. Click the link below and join the Discord. I want to hear your story.